Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Allison. Thing, I'm filming my uh, February wrap up and my March TBR in the same video because I have decided that I need to start doing wrap ups on my channel because a lot of the times when I do my TBR, I don't always read the books that are on the TBR. So I thought it would be neat to also do a wrap up TBR at the same time. So a wrap up for the previous month and TBR for the following month. So I'm going to just go ahead and start my February wrap up. Please excuse my voice. I have been, I was sick last week and so I still have like a sore throat cough thing going on. So I'm going to try to keep my voice as level as I can and um, so you guys can understand me. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started with my February wrap up and in the month of February I read four books. Um, the first one being A Vow So Bold and Deadly by Bridget Kemmerer and this book I gave two and a half stars. Um, I have a really bad love-hate relationship with this trilogy. Um, the I loved the first book, A Curse So Dark and Lonely, was probably one of my favorite reads of 2019, and um, I really disliked the second book in the trilogy. It's um, A Heart So Fierce and Broken. It was it was not good, and then this one was I don't know how to explain it really. I didn't care for the way the story went, like the direction that it took, and um, there's an issue with the people that were the main characters in the first novel are no longer the main characters by the time you get to this book, and the story just went a direction I'm not a fan of. Um, it's still a well-written book, for the most part. There are some bits that uh, the logic is just missing. Um, I can't really say because that would be spoilery and I don't want to spoil, but there was just some aspects of it that I was like, that just doesn't make any sense. Like, you can't just say something like that and then not back it up with facts. Now, the author, this is her first fantasy trilogy and she has written mostly, like, um, contemporary romances, I think, uh, YA ones for the most part, and... Um, I think it was a great attempt for someone who's never written fantasy before, and it is YA, so I do have to kind of remember that. But there just was... <sighs> She's not one that is, has, like, super flowery writing. Like, there's not a lot of descriptions and stuff in her books, which is fine. It's great. It's just she leaves out some pretty important aspects of the world building and just helping, like, the logic to flow really well. So... That's another reason why I gave it only two and a half stars. Other people probably loved it, but I just don't, I don't really like it. I didn't care for it all that much. Um, I wish it could have been better, but it just didn't end up being better for me. The Binding by Bridget Collins. This is a standalone novel, and it is adult. Um, what did I give this one for ratings? Three stars, I think. Um, this book is, has a very interesting concept in it. It is, um, either you could consider it historical fiction or historical fiction fantasy, um, because there isn't a magic aspect to it, but basically there, the story is about, uh, a young man who is what you call a binder, and, um, he works with books, and that's all I'm gonna say because I don't want to spoil it. So he ends up working with books, but... Um, the magic, the binding is part of the magic, and, um, I don't want to spoil, so I'm not going to say, but <clears throat> it ends up being more about, um, a romance, and, um, I just, it, the book went a direction that I really wasn't expecting or anticipating. I thought it was going to be more about the magic and books and stuff like that and it just wasn't. It was more about um, this boy and the romance he was involved in. Um, it is queer so there is that aspect to it but I really liked the writing. The writing was good. Um, they're just the the reason the reason I really didn't like it like uh, a lot was that it reminded me of adult contemporary novels and I am not a fan of adult contemporary novels. It was trying to be um, 
it was trying to be kind of magical but it just wasn't and um the the way it's written really reminded me of adult contemporaries and I really don't like them so this I book it is a good book um, if you like adult contemporaries and you have a hard time getting into the fantasy genre, then this book might be for you just because of the fact that it reminded me so much of a contemporary, but it does have a magical aspect to it, but it's not complicated to understand. So it's, it's really good in that aspect of things. But I ended up giving this one three stars and it is a standalone. So if you need a, you know, a quickish read that's not too hard to understand and you can get into pretty easily, this is a good one to go with. The next book is uh, Deal with the Elf King by Elise Kova and I'm not completely finished with this one yet so I don't have like a set in stone rating but as of right now it's sitting at like a three and a half four star rating. It just depends on how the story ends. Um, this book is very, it's really good. Um, it didn't take a lot to get started. I really enjoying the romance or the slow burn romance that is in this book. Um, what else? What else am I liking about it? I really like the main character, which is um, odd for me. Normally, I really don't. It takes me a long time to warm up to the main character, but I warmed up to the main character in this book pretty quickly, so that was really nice. Um, it is short. It's a really short book. It's just over 318. 300 pages. It's just over 300 pages long. So it's a really easy read and actually it's really funny because the dedication to this book it says for those who need a break and a second glass of wine. So it's meant to be for entertainment. Like you're not going to come out with a bunch of like deep theological concepts in this book. This is literally just for entertainment and I really am enjoying it. Um, there's a broody prince. There's magic. There's elves, there's fae, there's just all sorts of awesome things. There's a fade wolf, like there's just really cool things in this book. I am really enjoying it. Um, and depending on the outcome at the end will uh, skew my rating either to three and a half or four stars. But right now I'm leaning towards that for sure. So this was the third book. And then the fourth book is Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. I'm not going to hold this up because it's really heavy, but this was my fourth book. Um, this is like my fifth or sixth reread of Goblet of Fire, so um, I'm also not finished with that one. I was reading it during the first part of February because I was just not in a reading mood, and I just needed... I wanted to read, but I didn't... I couldn't force myself to... What... Uh, I couldn't force myself to read something that I hadn't read before, so I just picked it because it was easy. Um, I don't have to think about getting into it, and it's going to end up being a five-star rating because I it's one of my favorites in the series, and I really like it. Okay, so that is my February wrap-up, and now we're going to go ahead and get started on my March TBR. Um, last month in February, I used this app on my, my phone called... Uh, what's this called? Spin something or another. Spin the wheel. It's called Spin the Wheel, and the last time I did it, I put it up, I put the screen of my phone up on the video, but that was just a lot of editing for me. I have already picked out five books. I'm going to go ahead and still pick out ten books for March because um, that really helped me in February when I was dealing with that really weird reading slump whatever that was that I was going through that's finally over. I'm so thankful that I am back in the mood for reading books again. So um, I am going to go ahead and show you guys the first five books that I have picked out for my TBR and then I'm going to go ahead and spin the wheel on my phone for the remaining five books. Um, my plan usually every month is to have one buddy read at least and then at least one reread. So I have actually two buddy reads this month and I'm going to go ahead and do two rereads so that's why I already have five books picked out. So I'm going to go ahead and grab those and show them to you now. So one of the first buddy reads I'm doing for the month of March is The Fellowship of the Ring by J.R. Tolkien. This book um, I'm actually doing with um, Books with Brittany from her YouTube channel. She's doing like a channel-wide read, buddy read of the Lord of the Rings trilogy and she, they are starting The Fellowship in March, and I'm very excited. I've actually um, started my reread of this 
last year or the year, no, I think it was 2019. I reread this in 2019. The first time I read it was when I was like 13, which was a long time ago. So, um, that was the first time I had reread it since I read it the first time and I really enjoyed it, but I never went back to the series and picked up The Two Towers. So I'm just going to go ahead and read it over again because it's J.R.R. Tolkien and I'm sure, I'm sure there's probably some things that I missed in it because it's just so dense and I really love the story and it's obviously going to make me just want to watch all of the movies, but I'm going to refrain because if I watch all the movies, I'm not going to have time to read. So this is my first buddy read for the month of March. The next buddy read I have is A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J Maas and this one I am buddy reading with my friend Brianna. Um, we have been buddy reading our plan now because we've buddy read a book every month since the beginning of the year. I know it's only March but whatever. So in January we buddy read Blood and Honey by Shelby Mahurin and then last month we re we buddy read uh, Vows of Bold and Deadly. One, it just came out and um, we're, I'm actually really excited to buddy read it because I already have a lot of feels going into this book. Um, I don't know. I'm excited to read it because it's a new Moss book and I absolutely love her writing. So I know I'm going to like it but I'm just hesitant because it's Nesta and Nesta... <laughs> bless her heart. Nesta is just a mess. So we're going to dive into this one together and we're going to see how we feel about poor Nesta by the time we're done with this book. And for, actually I lied, I have three rereads on my list. But I did read Throne of Glass in February and I also, I gave that one four stars too. That was a reread so I really don't need to talk about it. Um, my first reread is Crown of Midnight by Sarah J Maas and this is the second novel in the Throne of Glass series. Um, just because I just reread Throne of Glass, I actually really enjoyed it more the second time around than I did the first time around. Um, so I am more than excited to get back into this series and continue reading it. <clears throat> um, I am someone that when I reread a series, I cannot reread re it back to back. Um, I have to have time in between. So because I just finished Throne of Glass, I probably won't be reading this until closer to the end of March just because I get bored of a story. I need um, different characters from different books and different stories and different kinds of magic systems to kind of like, it's kind of like if you sniff too many things, you kind of lose your sense of smell and you kind of just have to stop so your nose can recover. It's like that for me with books. I have to be able to enjoy a book and then I need to set it down and read something else and then maybe go back to that trilogy or series or whatever it happens to be just because I get bored. So um, this is the first book that I plan to reread in March. My next reread is going to be The Mime Order by Samantha Shannon. Um, if you didn't know, the fourth book in the Bone Season series just came out a few weeks ago. Um, my copy took a while to get here because I ordered it from the UK, so it took a couple of weeks. But um, that book is called The Mask Falling, and I have been rereading these um, to get to that one because it's been so long since I reread these. I read The Bone Season in February, and I absolutely loved it. And I know this one's going to be the same. This series is so, so good. Samantha's writing in this series is freaking amazing. I love... I love everything about it. I love the atmosphere, I love the writing, I love the characters, I just love everything. So I'm really excited to get back to this reread because I didn't reread, I didn't read this book in February, which I think I was planning to or maybe I was going to if I literally couldn't pick anything else out that sounded good to me. So I'm excited to get to this in March. My third reread of March is going to be Golden Sun by uh, Pierce Brown. And this is the second book in the Red Rising saga. Um, I love this book. I don't know. The first time I read it, I gave it five stars. I expect that to be the same um, in March. So those are all of the books that I had pre-picked out. So now I'm going to go ahead and start the Spin the Wheel for the remaining five. And the first book I have is... A Time of Dread by John Gwynn. This book I have actually already started reading at one point and again it was not because it wasn't good it was because of the weird reading slump that I was in so that's super awesome and super great. Um, 
it wasn't bad. The writing was really clear and very, um, I don't know, there wasn't a lot of like flowery nonsense going on, but it was a descriptive enough that I could understand what was going on and, and whatnot. Um, I just wasn't in the mood for it, and I think I might be in the mood for it now, so I'm actually really excited to add this to my TBR. That is To Sleep in a Sea of Stars by Christopher Pellini. This book doesn't look like it, but it is very big. I think it's over 800 pages. Yeah, it's really big. It is a sci-fi, it's his first sci-fi novel, and I really actually do need to read this because I got this back in October, I think, and I absolutely love his Inheritance Cycle, the fantasy series that he has written, um, and I really want to see what he does with sci-fi. I'm really excited about it, so I'm actually really glad this one's on my TBR now. Okay, I got three more books. The next one is going to be The Left-Handed Booksellers of London by Garth Nix, and this is a YA historical fiction fantasy, I'm pretty sure. Um, it has to do with, um, like, is it a mob type or gang gangster type? It's a gangster type book, but also deals with books. So it's a really interesting concept, and I really actually enjoyed the last um, standalone book that he wrote, which was The Angel Mage, which was a retelling of The Three Musketeers, um, or The Four Musketeers or whatever. There was four characters. I don't know. That book was really enjoyable. It was super quirky and I really enjoyed it. So I'm really hoping that this one is also kind of quirky, but I'll be okay if it's just got sassy characters in it. That would be super fine too. Um, I've had this book on my TBR before and I've just never taken the time to read it. It's really short. It's a standalone. So there's no reason why I shouldn't take the time to just read it next month. It would be, it would be really fun. All right, the next one is... The Girl and the Stars by Mark Lawrence, and I have done some research recently on this one, and I do think it is, like, not a continuation, but set in the same, like, universe world as his Red Sister series, which I have not read yet. I know, please don't crucify me. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't read it, but I saw this book, um, I don't remember when it came out. I think it was 2019 or something. 2020. It came out last year. Um, I think it came out early in the year though, but anyways, I saw this book and absolutely had to have it because, I don't know, I like stars and, um, it is adult fantasy and I've been trying to get into that. It's funny because I've been trying to get into adult fantasy and I've been buying a lot of adult fantasy books, but I'm not reading them. Does that make any sense? I'm like, I want to read more adult fantasy and so I buy all these adult fantasy books and then I don't read any of them because that makes, that makes no sense. Anyways. I am still excited to get to this book. I really just need to focus on not buying any books, which I think I have been doing good with this year. And I actually need to just read the books that I have on my shelves because that's just something that I need to do. All right, and then the final book for my March TBR is going to be... Ooh, interesting. Okay. It is going to be... Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse, and I think this one is also a standalone. I'm not, I can't remember if it is or not. It might not be, but um, I know next to nothing about this book either. Oh, it is, oh, it's a trilogy. Okay, it says book one of the Between the Earth and Sky trilogy, inspired by the civilizations of the pre-Columbian Americas and woven into a tale of celestial prophecies, political intrigue, and forbidden magic. Ooh, that sounds interesting. Why haven't I read this yet? pre-Columbian, so that's got to be like the 1300s or something, maybe even earlier than that. Oh, this is really interesting. This is going to be a historical fiction fantasy then. I can't wait to read this. Also, this has a really pretty map on the inside. These are the end papers. That's pretty cool. I really like that. I really want to read this now. Oh, and the words are big. Okay, sorry. I have like really bad eyesight. But I don't wear glasses. I don't need glasses, but I can't freaking read anything that has tiny text in it, so I just always get really excited when books have big words. It also means I'll read it faster, too. Okay, so that one actually just got bumped up on my TBR just because I read that little blurb, so that is gonna be... Let me write this down before I forget it. 
So that's gonna be my March TBR. I hope this combination video, that's the word I was looking for, combination, it's a combination video. Okay, uh, I always get on here and then I'm like, what are words? Can't remember anything when I first get in front of the camera. It's, it's like my camera shyness is coming out and I just like forget all the important words that I know. So it's really fun. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this combination video and um, I really enjoyed actually chatting about the February books that I read even though I forgot one because why not forget a book? That's whatever. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and that you will let me know what you guys plan to read in the comments and what you read in February. I'd love to know. And if you've read any of the books on my TBR, also let me know if you like them or not. And I guess I'll just see you guys in another video. Bye.